with me for quite some time it knows that I recently had a baby or not so recently because she's 10 months now um, and I've taken a year of maternity leave so trying to get through maternity leave requires a lot of financial planning and also just generally having a baby whether you decide to take you know like one month off um, for maternity leave or whether you decide to take a full year like I am all of those things require money <laughs> and so in this video I'm going to talk about how I manage to or am managing to get through a full year of maternity leave um, looking after my baby and how I've managed to financially plan for that. So let's get into it. Okay, so if we go to our spreadsheet, then you'll see that I've broken down my maternity budget into three sections. So we've got um, our benefits, we've got our baby items, and we've got our household budget. So in the first instance, before you, when you first find out that you're pregnant, there are a number of resources that you can go to. So the first one is entitle2.co.uk, entitle2.co.uk, I'll put that um, below somewhere. Um, and on that website, it's kind of like a, a, a financial wizard in, in a way. So you enter in all of your financial details and it will tell you how much state benefits you are entitled to. There are also um, various government websites as well. So if you just go on to .gov.uk or just search um, what benefits am I entitled to, you'll be able to see what benefits um, apply to you in your particular circumstances. So that's what I did. And this is where I have ended up with the benefits that I'm entitled to, which as you can see here is not an awful lot. So if we go to um, the, uh, the first tab, which is the benefits tab, and you'll see that I'm entitled to statutory maternity uh, pay. Um, so as well as statutory maternity pay, I'm also entitled to um, maternity pay from my employer. So I'm quite lucky that my employer does have quite a generous uh, maternity pay. <laughs> so that has helped quite significantly in helping me to live quite comfortably for a year without um, being at work. Okay, so, but as well as that, I am also entitled to statutory maternity pay, and that's pretty much universal to everybody, regardless of your income. Um, the other thing, the one thing to note is that um, if you are not working, then you would not be entitled to statutory maternity pay. There is an alternative um, type of maternity allowance, um, which you would have to speak to your local benefit office or whatever, in order to find out whether um, or how much of that you're entitled to. So if you're a working woman and you have been working in your company for company or organization for more than uh, or more than 26 weeks before the birth of your child, then you are entitled to statutory maternity pay. And this is broken down as 39 weeks, six weeks at 90, sorry, six weeks at 90 percent of whatever your average weekly earnings would have been for the remaining um, seven through to 39 weeks you would be entitled to statutory maternity pay and that is 145 pounds and 18 pence so obviously if you work for a company that has a better maternity policy than um, just the statutory one um, you would get the statutory maternity pay on top of that so if I just multiply and, and I'm I'm not going to put my actual salary here because you know that's a bit TMI um, <laughs> uh, but if you um, if you assume that your average weekly earnings would be um, across the board, £145.18. If you multiply that by 39, then the minimum you would get is 5,662 for 39 weeks. So I'm just going to base this over the course of a year. So obviously at the end of 39 weeks, you would get nothing. 39 weeks amounts to nine months, more or less. So you know that you've banked £5,662. £5,662. Then you've got your keeping in touch days. So these are days that you go into your place of um, business or your organization and you basically just catch up with the business to find out what is happening. Um, and you know, you usually have a meeting with your manager or you know, your teammates or whatever, and they will like sort of catch you up with what's happening in the business. And the, in, the intention is that you then don't feel like you're sort of not part of the organization because being at home, you are so disconnected from the workplace. And these are days that actually help you feel like, you know, especially if you want to go back to your job, that um, you feel like you're more connected back to the workplace. So 
I'm assuming again that the minimum that you would be earning is 145 pounds and 18 pence per week. So if I break that, in, that down into a day, um, that's 29 pounds and four pence. And so you know that you are entitled to 10 of those. Um, I say you're entitled. I'm not actually sure if you're entitled, but a lot of companies do offer these to you. So it's not like um, it's it's not like your legal right, but a lot of companies do offer them to you. So you will be paid every time that you go into your place of business, and usually that will be ten days that you will be paid for. So what you can do is just spread out the ten days over the course of however many. Um, you spread out the 10 days over the course of a year um, and you know it's it's an additional bit of money you know so nothing to sniff at then you've got your holiday pay so everybody in the UK is entitled to about 22 days or 20 yeah 22 it's either 20 or 22 I can't remember exactly um, days of annual leave and then you add on top of that like your bank holidays Christmas um, you know your national holidays etc and then you've got 5.6 days as an average obviously you know depending where you work that will be much more generous than this but just again at the minimum if you know that you know you per day you earn 29 pounds and four pence then that's 180 sorry, 813 pounds to add to your pot. So as the minimum, if you are a working person and you're not entitled to any additional benefits, then you know that you would be getting 6,765. Things like child benefit, for example, I haven't put on there because you know um, that doesn't apply to me and some other benefits, they just don't apply to me. So they are not on this tab, just to repeat. <laughs> okay, so if we then move to your baby items, so I've done a fairly comprehensive list and if you go onto my um, website, <laughs> I do have this um, entire list there. So these are the baby items that I ended up buying and it's quite comprehensive. Um, one thing I will say about a lot of the things that you will end up buying for your baby is that so much of it is wasteful. Your baby will end up using it for like maybe two or three weeks and then you know that it either doesn't work for you and your lifestyle or it just the baby's not interested in it anymore or you know you've moved on to the next thing so really my advice to you is especially if you're on a limited budget is to buy everything off ebay because <laughs> a lot of parents have made the similar mistake and now they've got so much crap that they need to get rid of so why pay full price for it if you um you know don't need to um just go on to ebay i mean being as this is my first baby i <laughs> and i've waited a very long time for this baby i kind of felt um like everything had to be new and you know i had to spend all my time searching for all this stuff you know to to really show my baby that i loved her and you know i put a lot of thought into it it's a crazy mindset but um that's pretty much what i did so you end up with a lot of wasteful stuff um Anyway, so <laughs> the main things that you will probably um, need to consider is obviously uh, the buggy, car seat and stroller. Um, these you can normally get in a bundle and, you know, try and get them in a bundle because you'll make quite a, a, a lot of savings. And to be honest, I would also say that if you don't want to buy secondhand via eBay, then what you can do is shop during the sale. So you say that, you know, when the summer sales are coming or the January sales are coming, that's when you're gonna buy the bulk of your stuff because, you know, a lot of retailers start discounting. So just bear that in mind. Uh, one thing I would point out is with the dresser, wardrobe and crib is that, um, I really would recommend that you just buy sorry, regular furniture rather than buy baby furniture specific. Cause often with the dresser, you'll have the sort of like pre-built, um, changing table on there and that changing table after your baby's like you know gotten old, you know beyond like two years or three years and you know you're sort of potty training them you won't need that um that fitted or that fixed um changing table and aesthetically it might not be pleasing and then of course you then can't really use it in any other room so ideally you just get like a regular dresser and just get like um you know a foam or plastic um changing table the other thing you can do is get the one that um, sits over your um, your your crib. Those are probably another space saving um, thing to get. Things to be aware of is that clothes, um, babies go through clothes very, very quickly. So for the most part, you're probably gonna need no more than, um, I would say about 10 baby grows for every three months of your baby's growth. Once they get to sort of like um, about a year or maybe like, 
nine months and they're starting to crawl and you know starting to try to walk you really don't need baby grows because you kind of need um clothes that allow their feet to be free so that they can you know walk and grip the ground properly so for the most part anyway generally baby clothes you will need um three of them for uh, sorry ten of them for every three stages or three months of your baby's life um and that's because they outgrow them <laughs> after three months and also they sell them but you know from like zero to three then three to six and then nine uh, six to nine etc so just bear that in mind um uh, and then things like nappies so babies typically will go through nappies uh, at about six per day on average when they're much younger they tend to go through them um, more frequently but on average you're probably going to end up with about six nappies per day so you just multiply your favorite brand um, you know find out the cost of the individual um, nappy from your favorite brand and then just multiply that by six <laughs> and that gives you like your daily total multiply that by um, by you know 30 days or whatever it is and then you end up with 730 pounds uh, per year so and then also uh, wipes as well so for me the brand that I choose is um, you know uh, a, a similar sort of um, brand um, and that I'm assuming that's going to cost me 730 it might cost me a little bit more and that's because you know you use wipes for more than just wiping a baby's bum <laughs> you might wipe their face or like you know wipe up their their tray table and all these kind of other things um baby monitor so th there are so many baby monitors on the market but um I would just buy like a really basic baby monitor you don't need a really expensive one I know when you first have a baby like you're so anxious at making sure that you know you're checking on them regularly all the baby monitors work, um, you know, to, to some degree, pretty much the same way. They all have like some slightly different variations of functionality, but for the most part, as long as you can hear your baby, uh, and if you get like a video camera one, um, you know, again, so long as you can see that the baby's not in distress, I don't think you need like high def, um, you know, viewing <laughs> of your baby. But, you know, it's much easier to say that now that I'm a less anxious parent than when I, you know, was just starting out and had no clue um for me all these things were really really important like having the, the best of everything you know so that i could feel like i was doing my job as as, as a parent of uh, making sure that my baby was okay all the time so anxiety will make you buy a lot of things that you don't need and my biggest my second um most important advice to you is that just be careful with the things that you buy because you end up not using a whole bunch of them so just take your time and buy with common sense. <laughs> um, so yeah, so this is my my full list. Um, uh, you know, it, it covers pretty much everything that I've bought so far. Um, and in total, I've ended up spending five thousand eight hundred and ten pounds. Um, uh, but I think I might have spent maybe five hundred pounds um, in miscellaneous things that I can't really remember that I've um, I've bought. Um, I've just got a line here for healthcare, and this is something I just wanted to quickly touch on. That obviously in the UK we have um, uh, universal healthcare, so you know you don't pay anything more than what's already taxed out of your wages. But I did put um, a little bit here for um, healthcare, and that's just things like um, infant paracetamol, some saline drops, etc. Just like um, infant, um, uh, you know, like drops, like vitamin drops that you might need. So, I mean, really, you won't probably spend that much more than that. Um, and babies also get free prescriptions as well. So, and you as a mother also um, get free prescriptions for uh, during your pregnancy and also up to a year after you've given birth. Now, let's go on to my household budget. So... Here is <laughs> our household budget. And obviously we know that because I was gonna be off for a year that we know, we need to know how much money we needed to save. And this is something that we had done many, many months ago, or well, actually very many, many years ago prior to um, having a baby because you know we knew and had prepared for having an extra person in our household. Um, so in my, uh, and these are my actual figures. This is how much money I spend and what I spend it on for my household. So I've got uh, my rent and mortgage, uh, and then I've got my utilities. So the thing to be aware of utilities is that 
you need to shop around for the best deals. Do not let inertia make you pay more for your utilities than you absolutely have to. And there's so many price comparison websites out there that you really should check out. And this applies to you whether or not you're having a baby or not. You just need to make sure that you're getting the best deal. Um, I do pay for <laughs> um, Amazon Prime and Netflix um, in lieu of having satellite TV or cable TV. Um, and you know, obviously you can then see I pay um, that much for the internet. I did try and get a better deal than this. I know it's quite expensive. I am with Virgin Media. I feel like they're um, reliable. I have used in the past other internet service providers. They're not reliable. The internet is a key part of my life. <laughs> so I want reliable internet. So that's why I pay that much for it. And I have tried to negotiate this down and every year it just seems to go up and up and up. Anywho. Um, so one thing to also be aware of with um, Amazon Prime is that you need to be quite um, sensible about returning stuff back because it's not free to return, it's free to have your stuff delivered as part of your subscription, but your subscription does not cover the return of items. And I only discovered that as a result of buying way too many stuff, uh, way too much stuff for my baby. So just bear that in mind that that's going to be an additional cost that you may not may or may not be aware of iTunes, I've actually um, since cancelled iTunes and the reason is I don't really have time to listen to music anymore um, except for when I go for a walk and usually when I go for a walk I'd rather listen to a podcast. Um, the thing about <laughs> being a, a mum as well is that I don't like to listen to the kind of music I like out loud because I don't want my baby listening to booty shaking music, you know. <laughs> I sound like my parents. Our biggest debt before buying a car was just our mortgage and actually we didn't have any credit cards or any loans or anything like that. Um, since having a baby we then decided or rather prior to the baby coming we had decided to just buy a car. Okay and then obviously we have car insurance. So I do have a second car and that is a really old like 12, 15 year old Beetle I think. Um, and uh, so we pay insurance obviously on the, on the two um, cars. Yeah. And then um, you have road tax, um, MOT. Um, so road tax for those of you who are not in the UK and something else to just point out is council tax in the UK is um, a kind of a tax that taxes you for like maintaining your area, cleaning your roads, taking away your rubbish or taking away your garbage. And it also covers um, various health and social care benefits and also the cost of schools, maintaining roads, etc., cetera, um, in the local area. And then you also have um, here, I've got road tax and that's another tax that's basically for the road specifically. So maintaining the road network. And then you have um, MOT, which is kind of making sure that your car is roadworthy. So that's another tax that everybody has to pay. And that will obviously depend on the type of car that you have. Um, and then we've got food and groceries. So we probably spend about 400 pounds on um, food. And then eating out, we're not really going out much um, to eat at restaurants. And we were never really big drinkers either. So our restaurant bill was never more than maybe like 50 or 60 quid when we went out. In fact, I, I would be, yeah, it's never actually exceeded 60 quid because, you know, when we do have a drink, we just have like one. <laughs> um, uh, anyway, so I've just accounted for eating out, um, assuming that we might spend hundred pounds a month. I mean, that rarely happens. What ends up happening is that we end up buying takeaway. So, you know, it, it never comes up to hundred pounds, but I've just um, given a bit of, um, of, of leeway in that um, budget. And then um, nappies as well. So, <clears throat> Um, although I've accounted for nappies in the previous um, tab, um, I actually don't know why I've got nappies twice. So anyway, if you, I'll just take this out. So if I take that out, <coughs> uh, delete, delete row. Okay. Um, and then we have things that are for our personal enjoyment. <laughs> so um, I've got um, a holiday fund. So we save about 300 pounds into a holiday fund. And then um, for coffees and lunches, so between the two of us, and obviously because I'm not working, it's not gonna be relevant to me, but I reckon for, um, for Ross, he probably spends like half of this, like 35 pounds for coffees and lunches at work. And then um, I also put into um, a junior ISA for um, Faith, so 50 pounds per month. Um, <clears throat> and when I do get like a lump sum, uh, say like my bonus, for example, I do put like half of it into um, her savings uh, fund 
well maybe not half but like a, a good chunk a chunk of it into um, the savings fund and then <clears throat> then we have classes so like things that I like to go to um uh yeah, so if I can get to some of these classes, then probably about £17 per month. And then we've got, oops, close that. Um, and then we've got uh, entertainment, <clears throat> so about £67 per month. So some of the leisure stuff that Ross does. Um, yeah, and then also, oh, the other thing I need to include is that for the coffees and lunches, although I'm not actually at work and therefore won't be spending money on coffees and lunches, I do meet up with, like, friends and, you know, other people that I know, um, and then we, you know, end up having some something to eat per month. So in total, <coughs> our budget is about 37,018, 37,182 that we need to save for the year. Um, so... Because I know that I'm getting a certain proportion of money for my maternity leave, it means that obviously I know that I don't have to save, you, you know, nigh on £40,000. Um, but notice that, you know, with um, some of the, the, the things that um, in here, <coughs> assuming, obviously I, I ended up with more than this, but assuming that, you know, if I had ended up with just this small amount of um, statutory maternity pay, and adding up everything in total, then I would have um, ended up with um, 67, six, yeah, £6,700, more or less. Um, but then, of course, I've ended up spending another well, around £6,000. So in total, I end up taking away, um, adding six to this. So if you add, um, let's, what was that tab? Let's call it let's call it 7,000 for the sake of simplicity. So um, plus seven, that would take us to 40, uh, 44. And then if I then minus six from that, that takes us to 38. So actually in the end, I probably did need to save nigh on 38,000 pounds. Um, so yeah, um, that's pretty much my budget guys. Um, I hope you've enjoyed this video. Uh, let me know what your maternity entitlements are in wherever you live <laughs> and uh, leave your comments and uh, thumbs up this video and I'll see you for the next one. Bye guys.